Thank everyone for being here, and especially our contestants. I wish everyone luck. I know it was a long road to get here. For some of you, you do this just for fun, do you not? I want you to get right to it. I know you have been waiting a long time for this moment. Let me introduce our Toastmaster for the night, last year's first place Table Topics contest winner, Mr. Barry Mason. join Toastmasters in the first place. The ability to speak extemporaneously is a powerful skill. Some people use it to talk to friends and family. Parents use it to speak to their children more effectively. Some people use it in the business world to be able to show the passion for a product or a service. And then there's some people like myself, who use table topics in a very effective way. I use table topics to get out of trouble. <laughs> now, I didn't always realize that until last year when the Toastmaster asked me if I was driving my car down a road and wound up in my girlfriend's or my spouse's living room. What would I say? Now, my reaction was probably similar to some of yours. I have no idea. What a stupid question. <laughs> so as I started walking down the aisle to the lectern, I noticed something. I noticed all the women in District 30 sitting there, hanging at the end of their seats, waiting for my response, giving me that look that only women can do, like, Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me see what you got to say about this, Jedi. <laughs> and that's when it hit me. That's when the true power of table topics was revealed. You mean to tell me that I can do something as boneheaded as drive my car into my girlfriend's living room and I got two minutes in 30 seconds to speak uninterrupted? <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, it was no longer a question. This was heaven. I'm 52 years old. I waited my whole life for this moment. I walked into that lectern with a whole new pep in my step. Give me that microphone. Ring, ring. Hey, baby, listen. Remember what happened to the house? Tonight, we get a chance to hear and see what eight other people do with their time. Madam District Governor, fellow Toastmasters, and distinguished guests, welcome to the 2013 District 30 Table Topics Contest. Tonight we'll have a table topics contest. When that contest is concluded, we will have a 10-minute break. 
After the break, we will conduct the, in, I'm sorry, the international contest is tomorrow. Getting a little ahead of myself. Contest, contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant in arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of Toastmaster International Rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestant's presentation. If you may, if you may do so when time permits, and we have a minute of silence between presentations. Thank you, and with that said, let the contest begin. We have eight contestants this evening. In the number one slot, Eudris, Uranice, Owen. Say the name again. Uranice. Uranice. Owen. Miss Aware. <laughs> In the second slot, contestant number two, Patrick Stevenson. Contestant number three, Tom Pedrick. Contestant number four, Matt McLaughlin. Contestant number five. Charles Bernstein. Contestant number six, Michael Eldwee. McElwee. McElwee. Contestant number seven, Edward Brown Lee. And last but not least, contestant number eight, Charlize. Arlington. Arrington. I would like the Academy Awards. This is the first time I've actually seen the question. Sergeant in Arms. I'm so, I'm so excited. I wasn't going to read it. I was just reading it. Sergeant in Arms. With the exception of Miss Aware, Eurydice. 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 Eurydice.
Your name is aware. Suggestion number one. If you help someone in need, is that a duty or a favor? Here it is. If you help someone in need, is that a duty or a favor? Contestant number one. and distinguished guests. If I help someone in need, it is both a duty and a favor. I consider it a duty because that's the way I want to live my life. My parents from the time I was a child instilled in me that I have a responsibility not just for myself, but for all of the people around me. As a child though, that was a very difficult thing for me to do. I was shy extremely shy. If I went to a grocery store, I didn't want to walk up to the cashier and ask any questions. I didn't want to speak to other people. So reaching out to others was not an easy thing for me to do. But I was fortunate enough to have the family I have. My sisters who love me and care for me, they lift me up by saying positive things to me. Here it is, you're so funny. Here it is, you're so smart. Here it is, when you teach your classes, you're Students must love having you. What my sisters were doing were helping me, just by lifting me up with their words. And years later, I found out through organizations such as Toastmasters and other speaking groups that just by speaking, I could lift other people up. The one thing that I was afraid to do as a child is the thing that I find I can use to help other people by lifting up my voice speaking up for others who are in need, and just helping them get through life. Is it a duty? To me, it is. I feel blessed to be able to stand up here in front of this group and do something that I never dreamed I would do. Through using my voice, I can help other people, especially children, find out things that they can do that they never thought they would do. I studied engineering in school. I can teach kids about engineering. I love speaking. I can help them gain their own voice. Is it a duty? I believe so. And I hope it's a favor to those helping them lift up their voices. Thank you. Contestant, contestant number two, Patrick Stevenson. 
Patrick, if you help somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Favor. Contestant number two, if you help somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Patrick Stevenson. Contest master, fellow Toastmasters, is that a duty or a favor? Yes. What do you mean, is or? It's not an either or thing. It is a duty to us. That's why we're here, because we like helping other people. And you know, when I joined this organization, I was amazed at how it helped me come out of my shell as a speaker. But what I was more amazed by is that I got, as I got used to it, I started to think, well, you know, I can kind of help that guy. And I can help that guy too, and that lady. And the satisfaction from helping others far surpassed what I got from the help I got coming in here. So is it a duty or a favor? It's both. You can't distinguish between the two. Now, let's talk about the duty side of it. Well, number one, we have an obligation to help our fellow man. We all know that. If we don't do that, if you don't do that, you're really not living the life you were put here to live. And I believe that. If you don't figure out a way to make this world a better place when you leave than when you got here, you really haven't done the job. And someday, someday, someone will ask you, did you do what you were supposed to do? Did you do the job? I saw an interview once of a gentleman who spent most of his adult life carving the image of an American Indian on the side of a mountain in the Black Hills. When he was asked, why are you doing this? He said, because someday I will be asked, did you do the job? And to that question, there is only one answer. Only one. And the answer is yes. But by gosh, if you do that only because it's your duty, then you're missing out on half a life as well. Because there is no much more fun, no much more satisfaction, no much better way to make you feel good about yourself than by helping your fellow man. Mr. Contest Chair. Third contestant, Tom Petrick. Tom, if you help somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Tom, if you help somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Contestant number three.
Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and our wonderful honored guests to help someone. Okay, I hear the call. <laughs> I'm coming! I'll be there as soon as I can. Thank you for whoever did that. <laughs> I wish I could always do that on cue, don't you? Anyways, I have been called to service, I believe, ever since I could read the sign that led out of Divine Savior Catholic Church in Norwich, Illinois. Our exit sign had below it service entrance. This is what I did. This is what I was programmed to do as a young Catholic boy. Catholic guilt, it's written all over. <laughs> Help as a, to have it return as a favor. I, I think there's a number of people in this room know me by heart that that's not in my agenda. To return the favor, to have it returned to me? No. Help is given out regardless. The hand is given out to everyone who says, I hear the call. I need help. I'm sorry, but because of my upbringing, this is what I was told to do. One of the things that I cannot do, as you notice, I can't hide very well. <laughs> so guess what? Ivory's in the back of the room, but hey, I know where Tom's at. Can you help us over here? Can you do this? Can you do that? Yeah, it comes with the entire package. <laughs> so help does not come with a reciprocal favor. Mr. Toastmaster. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been a Toastmaster for five years. I've never heard, I've always wondered what actually happens if you call the sergeant at arms to escort someone out the room. I always thought it would be really cool to be the one who actually asked that to happen. I don't think, I think it would be unfortunate to be the one that gets removed. So please take a second to take your phone now and check. Make sure it is in the off or mute position. Contestant number four, Matt McLaughlin. Matt, if you help somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Matt, if you help somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Contestant number four. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, dignitaries, and guests, helping someone, is it a duty or a favor? I think every single person in this room confronts that question every single day. It's all around us. And I think one of the binding principles of Toastmasters, one of the reasons that all of us are here tonight is to help someone else or to help a group of people and to do so really as a duty, not a favor. 
If you take an example and apply it to the Toastmasters program, I'm only here tonight because others have helped me along the way, helped me practice speeches for other contests, such as the International Speech Contest. In some cases, at 7 o'clock in the morning in downtown Chicago, before work, one of my Toastmaster teammates, helping me, she wasn't in the contest, she came down on her own time. I'm sure many of us have similar stories about helping others. Giving back really gives back to you tenfold, and I think that's really one of the enduring principles of Toastmasters. Another example, outside of the program, but yet related, and in every single club, I'm sure, the job market, networking, using sites like LinkedIn, but going beyond just having a LinkedIn connection and helping someone connect. That's something that I take personal pride in, helping others through my church group, Toastmasters that are looking for a new opportunity in the work world, old friends. And I find myself constantly on the phone, sending emails, trying to help people get positioned. And again, I see it as a duty. Why? Because I've been in that boat too, and others have done it for me. Helping others, it's a duty, not a favor. Mr. Toastmaster. cell phones. I teach kids all day long. I haven't shifted over. You guys are over 10 years old. Thank you. <laughs> I'm with adults now. All right. Contestant number five, Charles Bernstein. Charles, if you help somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Charles, if you help somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Contestant number five. Certainly, if it is your ex-wife or husband, it might be considered a duty, depending upon the position of the court. <laughs> it is, unfortunately, a question that I have some experience with. However, in other situations, and there are many that come up, it is a duty. What we owe everyone to help each other, treat others as we would have them treat us. The duty, that's the easy part. The favor, that's a little more hard. Because sometimes you have no real obligation to help someone. No one would expect you to help someone, and yet, there's a little voice in your head sometimes that says, eh, maybe you really ought to do it anyway, because it's the right thing to do. Mr. Table Topics Master. Mark the ballot. Talk loud. 
Silence does mean silence, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Contestant number six, Michael McElvey. Michael, if you help somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Michael, if you helped somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Contestant number six. Keeper? Yes, I am. It is my job to give back, to help others, as others have helped me before. I'm not saying that I'm a big, a big chef, anything like that. But what little I have, I had a lot of help in getting. I had my parents, I had my teachers, I had people in Toastmasters. My very first speech, I come out there, I somehow got through it, but I felt that I was going to wet myself. I felt that I was going to pass out. I didn't. And I have adult diapers now, so it's not really a problem. But I do wholly appreciate everything that people have given to me in my life. And so to the extent that I can give back and help others, yeah, some might call it a favor. Can I borrow five bucks or whatever when they get the chance? Maybe later on you can borrow five bucks from them, that sort of thing. Yes, in some cases it's a favor. But if I see someone that needs a hand, if I see someone that could use help with something, to get a job, work at a resume, improvement on a speech, it absolutely is a duty. And that's how I feel. Mr. Postman. Contestant number seven, Edward Brownlee. Edward, if you 
help somebody in need? Is that a favor or a duty? Edward, if you help somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Contestant number seven. Toastmasters, and I'm a yes. If I help someone in need, it is a duty. It is a great duty, and it's a privilege. It is better to give than it is to receive. If, perchance, you put in a situation where you can use your gifts by helping another individual. It is a sign that it's your time to manifest the powers that the Creator has given you to share. It is not yours. The energy is not yours. It belongs to the universe. The person you help belongs to the universe. And as a living being, you have a responsibility to grow, and you grow through giving, and you grow through helping, and you grow through rising to the occasion and standing among men and women and saying to them and to the universe, I am being called, I am being summoned, the bell has rung, now I will answer the call, because that call is from God, and one of his creatures needs my help, and I, <laughs> I, I will give because it is my duty. Thank you. Gentlemen, I have sergeant at arms. I am not afraid to use them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madam Timer. Contestant number eight, Charisse Arrington. Charisse. If you help somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Charisse, if you help somebody in need, is that a duty or a favor? Contestant number eight. Is that a duty or a favor? 
I submit to you, Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, and invited guests, and friends. If I help someone, it's definitely a duty. And the reason why I say that it's definitely a duty is because what else have I been put on this earth for? Why am I here? Sure, it's a favor, but first and foremost, it is a duty. I have come forth to be a gift in this life. And I am a gift, as each and every one of you are a gift. So if I see my fellow man, my fellow sister in need, no matter what that need may be, you better believe I'm going to rise to, to the occasion each and every time. Because what you give comes back to you. What you give will always be a seed planted in the ground that will reap a very wonderful harvest. What you give to another is obviously something that is going to prosper your life. It's going to prosper my life. So yes, I'm definitely going to always be a duty to someone. The bottom is crowded. The top <coughs> needs me. <laughs> so, having said that, I'm going to always give my all. I'm going to go for it. I've only got one life to live. I've got one breath. And while I'm here, I'm going to die empty. I'm going to see my fellow men, my fellow sisters. I'm going to say, how can I help you? What do you need? What can I do for you? Because that's what we're supposed to do. That's a question, but in my mind, the answer is very simple. Duty. Everybody, let's help each other. Let's make this world a better place for everybody. Everybody please remain silent while the judges complete their ballots and have collected them by the ballot counters. Thank you. here and being down there last year. First of all, let's give all our contestants a hand. <laughs> For the sake of time, may I have all the contestants come up to the front, please? Let's give them a round of applause as they come up. I did um, here table topics. I did evaluation a few weeks ago. I've done a speech contest um, and tell tales. 
they're all just different types of speeches, so I can play with different things like humor and being silly. Thank you so much for competing tonight. second contestant is also a friend of mine, Patrick Stevenson. Patrick, you know the drill, how long you've been at Toastmasters, and what club do you represent tonight? I am with South Loop Speak Freaks. We're downtown evening community club and club number 7079. I've been around for about, oh, I see our couple members back there. How about that? Uh, we've been, I've been around since about 2003, so just over 10 years now. And how does it feel being here today at the district level? You know, I, I can't, I gotta say, it feels outstanding. Um, when you start the contest season each year, I'm not a Chicago native, but I'm assuming a few native Chicagoans have the same experience I do. Every January, I swear off the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> and every July, I think, well, you know, maybe this is the year again. And I get that same feeling when fall rolls around and humorous and evaluation contests are starting. When spring rolls around and table topics and speech uh, competitions are starting. You know, it doesn't matter how far you get, but it is a thrill. It's an exciting moment. Anytime you get on the stage, lay it on the line and let yourself be judged. There's nothing like it. Wonderful. Well, thank you for competing. and one of the tallest Toastmasters. <laughs> Please tell us your, the club you're representing this evening and how long you've been a member of Toastmasters. I am proudly representing Tulsa Algonquin Club number 125-101-3. I've been in Toastmasters a very long time. That makes it about 15 years. Let's give them a hand. Irish and Tom had a similar incident, incident happen at the division contest where something happened right on cue. So please tell us how did you get that phone call to go exactly the way you needed it? <laughs> Was it the Irish thing? Was it the force? What did you do? <laughs> All him. I'm representing 219 Toastmasters right. downtown, Club 3288. And as always, there are 219 people in the room tonight, and it's great to, right. great to see friendly faces. And I've been in Toastmasters since 2007. Tom is a diehard Cub, I'm sorry. Matt is a diehard Cubs fan, and are you still practicing to become an announcer? This is the next voice of the Cubs. I do practice on a regular basis. I do a number of different public address announcing jobs, and I also do freelance play-by-play -play on an internet venture. And this past winter, I had an expanded role with DePaul, and a big recent thrill for me was to be the public address announcer for a DePaul-Louisville game, late February in Rosemont. And Rick Petito, who a lot of people know, was about as close to me all night as Barry is right now. And Barry is a little more well-mannered and behaved than me. But they're both New Yorkers. <laughs> Not, I guess I've been in Toastmasters for a little bit over a year. 
because of the positive reinforcement and the uh, support and the ability to talk and talk and well, kind of talk and I'm kind of happy that I'm still standing at this point so I'm, I'm <laughs> Edward Brownlee Edward what club are you representing this evening and how long have you been to Toastmasters? I'm representing Oakbrook Speakers number 6027. Thank you. I've been a Toastmaster for about seven months. So. Wow. so, Edward, this is obviously called Toastmasters International. And may hear a little accent from somewhere, so can you tell me what place you come from originally? Mississippi. Mississippi. When it scares me, I, I like to stretch myself because I know on the other side of the coin there is something wonderful awaiting me in my life. Oh, Thank you. 
the same night. I always have that I am not a judge at these events. And I'm just going to get right to it. Let's get to the results. And our trio is going to assist us in distributing the trophies. Our third place winner of tonight's District 30 Table Topics Contest is Uranus Awari. Our contest. Thank you so much for coming. We're very proud of tonight's winners. 